This is my carnivorous plant about to feast on its first ever meal. But what if I told you it took me 8 hours just to figure out how to make this happen? Yet what makes this so special is that no one has ever got this plant eating on film before and it's the first time I've ever seen this plant eat. You see, I found this ant colony with my tortoise yesterday and at first I didn't think much about it until I remembered that I grow a plant that specifically eats ants and that's when I had the idea to feed it for the first time ever. Yet, seeing as I have never seen anyone feed their plants like this, I'm not sure how to do this. But I have an idea. If we just lift up the cats where all the ants are and simply put the plant there, surely all the ants will just climb up the pots and get eaten. It's simple, right? Well, not really. You see, not only did I trap this little ant, but the rest of them don't really care about this pot being here. However, I am prepared for this. We are going to bribe them. I knew that they wouldn't care about this pot just being there, which is why I have to take matters into my own hands with honey. And by honey, I mean real honey. I'm not sponsored by anyone, so don't worry about that. Now apparently, ants love sweet things. So if we leave a drop of honey right outside their entrance, they should all rush out to have a taste. And eventually, we can just put honey on top of the pot and they'll simply follow it up there. Or so I thought. Why the hell do these ants not want the honey? This makes no sense to me. If you have your honey inside your house, inside a cupboard, wrapped in a plastic bag, they'll still find a way to swarm it. But if we give them honey right on their doorstep, they don't care? This honestly had me confused for about an hour until I eventually noticed something that could explain what was going on. You see, we were so occupied with this entrance here that I didn't even notice that they were starting to come out of the ground all the way down here. Well, you know what they say, when one anthill closes, another one opens. And this time, I made sure to shove that honey right in their faces. And luckily for us, this time we had mild success. They kind of just taste it and don't really care. And what makes it worse is that the leaf just blows away and takes the honey with it. This honestly is quite worrisome, as if they don't even want this tasty honey, will they still want to eat the nectar from the plant? The thing is, most carnivorous plants share some similarities, and one of them is that they use sweet nectar to attract their meal. And on top of this, this specific type of carnivorous plant also has some extra features that help it apparently catch bugs. These beautiful colors, the fact that they grow close to the ground, and these hairs that act as a ladder for insects' feet all help it in catching food. However, if we can't get the food to go to the meal, we will never be able to see all these features in action. Yet this is when I discovered the key to controlling the colony. You see, this is quite a warm day, and earlier I noticed that these ants like to stand underneath this pot where the soil is quite damp. Now, I must have subconsciously thought about this because I just randomly sprayed them and they absolutely loved it. Look at them, they're like toddlers at a water park. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this. The thing is, I don't know why exactly they love this water so much, but every time I spray them, you can see how they lift their little bums up into the air. And I'm also pretty sure that when they do this, they are spraying pheromones into the air, which makes all the other ants come out of the nest to see what's going on. And of course, this is the best time to put the pot on top of them. Think about it, they're swarming all over the damn place. Why wouldn't they climb up this pot and see what's going on? Well, let me be the first to tell you that they wouldn't because they just won't. However, I don't think this is actually a problem. You see, now that we can make them swarm everywhere, 
whenever we want. Our honey idea might actually work. Yet, seeing as the honey might have been a bit too thick for them earlier, let's water it down for them in this lid. Now, this lid is actually more important than just being a place to mix the honey. When the ants swarm their favorite food, they'll all be on top of this lid. So, we could easily just pick it up and put a whole bunch of ants right next to the plant. And just in case they fall into the mixture, I'm adding some pebbles here so that they can just grab onto it and pull themselves out. Well, at least that's what I had hoped for. They literally just fall in. They don't grab onto the pebbles, they don't drag themselves out, and even when I try and give them a leaf or something to grab onto, they just don't. I don't understand what it is with these British ants. They don't like pure honey, they aren't really interested in this honey water, and when I give them a way to not get stuck in it, they don't use it. If I was still in Australia or South Africa, those ants would have brought the queen out on a chariot and they would have finished building a bridge to this nectar by now. But here we are, watching ants just fall into the honey water by mistake. And as much as I was upset that the ants were just dying for no reason, this was overshadowed by the damn girth of this colony. They are starting to appear at the seams of this garden bed and you'll find out later that they are literally everywhere. Now after about another hour of waiting and spraying the ants so that they keep running around, the lid has become quite full with deceased ants. And although this colony is massive, I honestly don't want to just watch them drown for no reason, so I think we need to go back a step. The problem we are facing is that the ants are silly and drown in any water that collects in this lid. However, seeing as we can now make them swarm whenever we want, we could try just pure honey again. Hopefully this means that the ants won't drown in the honey water like before and will actually have a chance to walk on the lid and actually get some of that honey. So with plan C in effect now, we still get the same result. Okay, this is kind of my fault. When I spray the ants, water collects in the lid and they can drown again. Fine. So what if we have the lid on its side, away from the spray, so that water just can't collect in the lid? Surely this will work? No. Even the tiniest drops get ants stuck inside of it. Well, all they need are some ways to escape, right? Like some twigs and pebbles? Nope. Wrong again. These ants don't want to help themselves, they just want that sweet embrace at the end of the tunnel. Now guys look, I don't know how else to collect these ants other than picking them up one by one. We can't attract them with honey, we can't attract them with honey water, and we can't get them to go onto the lid or up onto the pot. Now this is probably a really stupid way of doing this because they're probably just going to walk off of the lid as quickly as I can put them on. But I don't know what else to do and I am not going to stop until we figure out a way to feed this plant naturally and be the first people ever to do this for our plants. So yeah, let's, let's give this a shot guys. Well, I have collected a grand total of three dead ants. They literally just walk off quicker than I can put them on there. But in the past 30 minutes, something has changed with the colony. Every single spot of this dirt has a little cluster of ants at one of their, I guess, entrances? Literally everywhere. And when I saw this, I had some kind of an epiphany. If I dig some dirt, there are ants literally everywhere they are inside this entire garden bed and unlike before when they were just in one small corner they are now part of this dirt so what i think will be the winning idea is probably the easiest and most simple out of them all let's just dig a hole and put the pot inside of it and then spray the ants. This makes so much more sense, especially because these plants would be growing down in the dirt and not in a raised pot off the ground. So I think there's only one last thing to do, right? Let's spray the ants and watch our plant eat for the first time ever.
Now I genuinely cannot believe how well this is working. The ants just walk up the plant and fall into the pitcher and here we were, worried that they wouldn't be interested in the nectar of the plant. It just goes to show how good these plants are at their job. And to top it all off, a queen ant even made it out of the nest to take a look. Now although we lost a few ants to make history, I am so glad we figured out a way to feed our plants and be the first people ever to film these plants eating the way that they would naturally out in the wild. So if you've watched this far, please consider subscribing, leaving a like and you'd probably enjoy watching this mini olympics between carnivorous plants. I'll see you there.